You know, I am firmly of the belief that Sukuna is just in need of a better PR team because <laughs> although this is hilarious, the Fraudkina stuff is getting a little out of hand. So I want to take a couple minutes and really meaningfully break down whether Sukuna is actually a fraud, what these allegations mean, as well as what this Gojo vs. Sukuna fight means for the story more broadly. Also appreciate the support on the last video. I know I just kind of dropped that one out of nowhere, uh, but I, I, I'm doing this this now. I'm just trying it out for a bit. Let me know if let me know if you like it. <laughs> But to begin fully understanding what Gojo vs. Sukuna is even about, we have to understand what exactly they're fighting for. Gojo is basically fighting Sukuna out of a sense of obligation. Not because his students are weak or that they haven't stepped up despite, you know, us seeing that they're clearly trying and getting better at being strong. So what this translates to isn't Gojo fighting Sukuna because he hates him or to settle some kind of personal vendetta. If that was the criteria, then Kenjaku was a much more fitting fight for that, like, box. Stealing Suguru Gedo's body, getting him sealed, all of that is much more personal for Gojo than just Sukuna existing. Which is why there are a lot more people who are fans of Yuji being the one to ultimately finish off Sukuna for good by the end of the series. Yuji's been waiting a long time to get back at Sukuna for what he did when he was in his body in Shibuya. Because if Gojo doesn't step in, well, his students aren't ready, so Sukuna and Kenjaku are gonna run amok, but more so, Megumi will be well and truly lost if they all give up hope about defeating Sukuna. And so you have to think about the fight insofar as stopping Sukuna, freeing Megumi, and then stopping Kenjaku after you're done cleaning up the mess. Now, this is easier said than done. And I think this is where we start getting into the fraud kuna allegations being thrown around and whether or not Sukuna should even be considered the strongest in history based on his performance in this fight. I do not think there is a single JJK fan reading the manga week to week and coming out with the conclusion that Gojo vs Sukuna is not a cool ass fight. However, it's important to consider that both of these combatants are going into this fight for very different reasons and motivations. You can argue Sukuna's motivations are a lot more ambiguous. He wants to fight somebody who's at least as strong as him and can show him the true meaning of love according to like how Yorozu phrased it. Don't get it twisted, this is not me being a diehard Gojo fan and being like, no, he's not really trying hard, you guys just have to understand. Unfortunately, I'm not that delusional. I, I'm genuinely serious. I wish I was. I would have a much more optimistic reading experience week to week if I was. What I mean is, already establishing the premise of the fight, both of them are going into it with vastly different motivations and goals. I'm sure you can argue Gojo being swayed a little bit and really getting into the zone with this fight, but generally speaking, those are the stakes. Now despite all of that, despite Sukuna being on paper having more reason to go way harder in this fight than Gojo does because, you know, to try to protect Megumi's body, duh. Especially after the most recent couple chapters, we have seen Gojo put on an absolutely dominant fight, cementing a few different things. Chief of which for me is the confirmation that Gojo would absolutely stomp Hayden era Sukuna. The fraud would have actually gone into nap time much quicker quicker than he did in Megami's body. Whoa, oh my god, sorry. Ooh, I, I think I had like an out-of-body experience and the Gojo fan in me just took over. Jokes aside, this very dominant performance from Gojo actually reveals a lot about Tsukuna's actions leading up to the fight. The most obvious one, taking control of Megami's body. It's actually very reasonable to assume that Tsukuna is smart enough to have recognized the limitation in challenging Gojo, which is A, getting past his infinity, and B, getting past his other ability, specifically Unlimited Void. Thus, taking over Megami's body can be seen as a purely precautionary measure. On this point, one of the most consistently fascinating things about Tsukuna's character is that he's a weirdly intelligent fighter. In fact, you could say that based on the way Tsukuna was fighting Jogo and Shibuya, that Tsukuna actually fights more akin to a weakling. He takes the time to consider an opponent's other abilities, the way their techniques work, their speed, strength, etc. Like, even to the point where he's doing it unconsciously with Mimiko and Nanako after he's already beaten them. In fact, I would say one of the most underrated aspects of Tsukuna's character and his status as a fighter is how analytical he is. He truly is a student of the game. In fact, this trait is consistently shown to us by Gege in the Gojo vs. Tsukuna fight, where Tsukuna is able to understand and break down to Gojo what he's been doing without Gojo explaining it. Top of his already insane and to quote Kashimo, godlike curse energy control, making him second only to the six eyes in terms of efficiency, allowing him to not only eyeball but replicate everything Gojo's been able to do with the six eyes and his experience in Prison Realm. Meaning that Tsukuna is not only crazy strong with damn near double the amount of cursed energy as Yuta, this all culminates in the image of Tsukuna being a technical and jujutsu genius. Meaning that even without Maharaga and the Ten Shadows helping him, which believe me we will get to later, Tsukuna is still great and almost second to Gojo in terms of adaptability. However, even playing devil's advocate, I don't want to glaze Tsukuna too hard, he still grossly overestimated his own abilities compared to Gojo, and didn't realize that he was suffering the same consequences he was so boldly bragging about in literally the previous panel. 
And it is in these moments of, I, I don't want to call him humility, because Sukuna is not a humble guy by any means, even when this shit is happening to him. Guy is literally bleeding from all four of his eyes, and he's still not letting up. That I think we can begin to dissect why the reaction to Sukuna being a fraud is as visceral as it is. I think Sukuna's cocky attitude and not really acknowledging any of the roasts given to him by Gojo or literally anybody spectating the fight is truly what makes it very satisfying to clown on him whenever he gets to eat his words. However, I think it is in Sukuna's lack of a response or lack of care what anybody thinks of him that plays a role into how these uh, fraud Kuna allegations manifest. And moreover, why I don't think Sukuna particularly cares how he's being perceived and how he's winning. I saw this one TikTok that really put it best and actually reframed how I see this fight a little bit, but this isn't a fight between the strongest in history and the strongest of today. When most characters describe Sukuna's strength, they describe the characteristics of it more than the actual quality of it. They call it overwhelmingly evil, they call him a natural calamity, they give him all these different descriptors, but none have ever really addressed him as the strongest. So Sukuna, unlike Gojo, isn't fighting to retain some arbitrary title, he's more just checking Gojo and telling him that there's a reason he's remained on top for over a thousand years. Really, the onus is on Gojo to justify his long-maintained streak of being the strongest in the JJK verse, which is why Gojo's comment about Sukuna being the challenger is arguably more true than the other way around. Now, I know throughout this whole video I've been wearing the moniker of Sukuna's strongest defender, don't get it twisted, I have said it before and I'll say it again, I am firmly a Gojo shill till the end of days. However, I think I've done my due diligence, you know, playing fair. Let's address the elephant in the room. That is Sukuna's overwhelming, never-ending, honestly pathetic use of Maharaga throughout this fight. See, ever since Gojo vs. Sukuna started, I've had this fear building up that Gojo's status as the strongest sorcerer would be put into question relatively quickly and then disproven as expeditiously. However, I couldn't let this apprehension also get in the way of undermining Sukuna's status as the final antagonist and a true evil prick. So I think even if the fight was to end in chapter 233, which for the record I don't, I think we have a solid like three to five more chapters to go, I think Gojo's preservation and his status as the strongest sorcerer will be unquestioned, undisputed, and we could just chalk it up to Sukuna cheating. Now, is it a little bit of a cop-out? Maybe, but you have to admit, this is not a 1v1 or a 1v2. This is basically a 1v5. Gojo's performance in this fight is legendary. I don't think anybody can be able to take it away from him, even if he loses. Although, I don't think Sukuna's walking away very cleanly either. Actually, you know what? L let me just amend a little bit of that statement. I wouldn't put it past Gege to give Sukuna a Sensu Bean, uh, Dragon Ball Z, Cell, Gohan moment. So, like, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> So, getting back to the main topic of this video, answering the big, big question, is Sukuna a fraud? Basically, he's a fraud, yes. However, he's not gonna care, he's not gonna act like he is, he's going to take that win and wear it proudly, he does not care. Sukuna, I think, knows that he's a fraud more than anyone else, but he, he won the fight, didn't he? Now, will the students complain? Of course, they have to. Gojo's probably going to die at the end of this fight. However, I can tell you that Kenjaku will be over the moon if that happens. The six eyes no longer getting in his way at the end of his goal? <laughs> he is on cloud nine right now. But you know, I guess it means the students just gotta step up, and Yuta, you know, after he changes his underpants, he's gonna get in there and he's gonna show Sukuna who's boss. Thanks for watching. Follow me.